figured I'd just show this quick. I'm wiring the Eugene West control cabinet, which actually I enjoy doing. I don't mind wiring at all. I know I'm weird. And this is a little tip. I just came up with this and thought maybe any other people that are doing cabinets, some tuck it away. Maybe some point in the future might be useful. All these turn, all these toggles here are double pull, double throw, tortoise controls. They're just you know normal reverse. That's all they are. Nothing real fancy about it. They're wired per the instructions in the tortoise uh, instruction sheet from Circuitron. Basically, uh, and I won't go through a lot, but I'm, I'm I'm using reverse wired diodes. So basically, you come in 12 volts through the switch. You go out. One of the two diodes lights based on the polarity. It goes out to the number one contact on the tortoise, comes back to the other center portion, then goes to ground. So what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself, I'm not, I got 17 of these. I'm not bringing 17 individual leads down to 12 volts and ground. To me, that's insane. So what I'm going to do is jumper. I'm going to go basically in logical groups. This group of four, I'll come in 12 volts to one, jump, 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 ground, jump, jump, jump. And then these five these five, and then these three, just the way they kind of laid out. So, that's cool. But now what i got to do on the toggles is actually do all that wiring which and, and soldering. And I thought, well, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do this group of five, and I'm going to solder them on the bench, uh, leave pigtails long enough to go over where they got to go. I will have to bring in the LED leads and solder them out there in the cabinet, but that's okay. That, that I can live with, because I don't want to have another pigtail with another crimp joint. I could, but I figured, you know what? The leads on the LEDs are long enough. I'll solder them to the switches when I'm out there. I'll just deal with it. So what I came up with, I thought, because you try to put these little tiny toggles, five of them, lay them there, turn them upside down, support them, solder them. It's like, how the hell am I going to do that? So I thought, well, think about it, you Darth Vader breathing moron. What I have is the diagram scaled that I use to drill holes in the actual cabinet itself. Huh, okay. So what I did, I had some extra task board laying around. Oops, sorry for the fast pan. I just used that same template, real quickly drilled some holes, and now I'm mounting them in the exact pattern they're going to be. So now what I'll do is I'll take this, turn it over, see all the switches are nicely secured in there. I'll, I'll set it on something to raise it to the right height for comfortable soldering. Now, when I make the jumpers for the 12 volts, and the pigtail and the ground and the pigtail it's it's all right so I know when I take them out of here I can, I can even use this to carry it a handy dandy carrier over to the, to the turn control panel I know the you know the lengths are right otherwise these are laying on the bench flip flopping around I'm trying to solder them I could see a lot of harsh language being used so I made up this template for the one set of five this template for the set of four which is the, oops, yeah, truck train terminal and the industries up here. So they're all set. Now it's uh, just a little little tip. Something you may want to consider, make a little template up. This is just a cheap uh, task board. I mean, it's, it, it, there's nothing to it. You could use masonite if you wanted to, but why use some good masonite? So, in fact, I was thinking, you know what, why not even just, do I have a Sharpie? Check this out. Why don't I just make my darn... Control panel right here. <laughs> okay, where am I going? I'm going up here. I'm going over here. I'm going to go here. Oh, 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 that track got bent. Heat, heat distortion. And these are the ladders. There you go. There is my control panel. Done. Man, that was easy. All right, just, all right, seriously, folks. Just an idea. I'm trying to make things a little bit easier. So now I'm going to get to soldering all these. Making up everything I can here on the bench where it's much easier and much more comfortable to solder then take it over and get them all out of here in the cabinet things should line up nice you know, the wire length should be correct plop them in they'll sit just like that inside the cabinet here we go okay that was your free tip for the day so let's get to, let's get the solder in here and get these things ready for installation okay here are the two uh, templates everything's soldered at least everything I can do here on the bench this is the one for the area, that's the industrial area in the truck train terminal. And this is for the ladder, for the yard ladder, that is the north yard. So you can see I have all the pigtails cut that are going to go back from 
the one side of the switch these go back to basically to the tortoises um, say number eight the number one lead for the tortoise is going to come from the LED well the basically the power comes in through 12 volts and this red is the 12 volt jumper and then this pigtail will go over to my 12 volt terminal board comes in goes down through you know whichever way the switch is thrown basically through the center terminal here which goes out to the reverse wired LEDs that goes to the tortoise comes back on this brown wire and then into ground and ground is jumpered and that pigtail goes to the ground on the 12 volt circuit so this looks pretty nice and I can just carry them right over to the layout like this and again this arrangement is the same you know physical dimensions so when I pull these out of here I can put them in carefully I don't be bending these like crazy because they're this is 26 gauge um, solid wire so then I can put them in and then all I got to do is basically I got to do have to solder the LED leads a black and a red from you know one from each of the LEDs to here the other side of the LEDs will I'm going to crimp them and run them back along with these wires to a terminal board where I'm going to connect to the wire runs out to the tortoises and then disconnect the 12 volt and ground and I'm done so it should not hopefully take all that much time so all right just wanted to show that so it's ready to go so I this is this worked out well for me this little template and I did see that's my control panel so <laughs> okay let's go over and get them installed well there it is finally got it done not my finest work um, I had to do a lot of troubleshooting on this one to get everything to work right and I made some I'm gonna say mistakes and I'll explain it because again hey on this channel we show the good the bad and the ugly the bad work me being the ugly and the good well that happens every once in a while I guess I got lucky um, just a few notes on the exterior of the panel it's just a piece of masonite you can see I try to get fancy and add labels well I didn't sand it very well and they're, and they're well, you can see over here they're they're peeling up so I don't know if I'll keep them on try to secure the edges I wanted to label it because having been at other folks layouts and operating especially if you're a new person you don't know you know the guys layout and to me it just helped some people actually label them on the layout itself so I thought well I'll go ahead and label this at least like and okay good idea doesn't look all that professional but you know what the issue I have is just with them peeling up I did try to spray it with some Krylon matte varnish didn't help so come back stick them maybe peel them off and I, I don't know anyway um, just a note of caution for the toggles I did use a nut driver it helps secure them you know you can kind of hold the switch in the back and tighten the nut on the outside as opposed to do it by hand or with a pair of pliers but <laughs> be delicate don't go medieval on it because I did and I broke a switch so just be careful just get in there snug it up just enough but if you go too much you'll break it and I did broke it and the, the handle came right out of it so well you know note to self um, this thing isn't totally labeled yet because these turnouts this is the main line crossover this is the main line switch into the north yard this is the main line switch into the basically into the south yard these little lights here are indicating that the turnouts are in local control or hand control that's just a carryover from the way I had to lay out before if they're all down you can see I don't know if it shows up but the lights go off that indicates the turnouts are in basically dispatcher motor it's called if you look at the CMRI books but that means that these kind of are not controlled locally only the dispatcher can throw them well I don't normally operate with a dispatcher at least not yet so I tend to leave them up and then they're normal right now they're normal hand or normal local then of course if you throw the toggle it throws the turnout and the light changes and life is good now I did check all the tortoises um, a pet peeve of mine or not it was a pet peeve just what I like to do is have the switch handle and the light you know kind of show you the route so in this case these are all normal they're all up that one's up for normal this is this is physically down but it's normal well I had some issues with that I'll, I'll show you on the inside the inside is not the neatest 
because of the fact I was reusing, you know, over half the switches are reused, LEDs are reused, and it's just not my finest work. If I had started from scratch, it'd be a lot neater, but I'll show you that anyway. So just a note, because this, this caused me some issues. You know, me wanting this, the toggle to align with the light and, and the root, so to speak, caused me some issues. And I'll show you on the inside. So let's take a pause and take a look inside. I'll explain myself to you. Boy, what a mess. Like I said, <laughs> it's crazy how fast these control box, control templates, cabinets fill up with just, you know, basically 17 you know, kind of turnouts just for switches and three for the main line. And, and anyway, so that's a mess. But um, again, I would have done it a lot neater if I started from scratch, but I was re reusing a lot of stuff. Now, here's the issue. Um, well, a couple things that I found while working on this again, just to show you how silly things are. Um, those back there, those are the switch. You can't tell. Those little circuit boards in the back are for the motor hand light on the front. Basically, if you're in motor, it's off. You go to hand, the LED turns on, so you know you're in you know, hand or local control. The, the LEDs weren't working, and I'm like, why? I have 5 volts. I brought 5 volts into the cabinet. Well, on the terminal board where I did my 5 volts, which is you know, it's back there, where I connected the terminal board, the corresponding screw on the other side wasn't secured, so I didn't have 5 volts. Okay. Turn the screw in and get, you get 5 volts. On the one crossover, this is the SMC12 card here that controls the crossovers. Again, this is CMRI stuff. I know some, some people's eyes might be glazing over, but hey, too bad. Uh, <laughs> you can see it's, it's been remarked and relabeled from the old turnout designations to the new ones, which are now 18, 19, 20. Well, number 20, which is the mainline crossover, you know, the light was working, the LEDs were working, the toggle, when I put it down, it would go, the LED, for the amber LED would go off, but the darn turnout wouldn't throw. I was like, what am I doing wrong? I'm looking at it, I'm crawling underneath, I'm checking all the connections, everything looked right. I thought maybe the toggle switch is bad, which I really didn't want to have to deal with because it's buried. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> and the toggle is bad. No, no, no. Here's what it was. I had this which controls the throw over here. So it wasn't doing anything, you dummy. Um, these SMC12 cards are set up so basically each section gives you two turnouts and this is what actually controls it from the switch. Well, I had it on the wrong thing there, so that's why it wasn't moving, so okay. After about an hour, simplest thing, I fixed it and moved it over and good to go. Um, <laughs> now, to the, the main point of this, the tortoise controls. Like I said, I used, I decided to simplify things for me. <laughs> that looks simplified, right? Yeah! And I wanted to go with reverse wired LEDs in the circuit out to the tortoise. They're reverse wired, so when, when it's throwing normal, one light's on, reverse, the other light's on. Simple concept. I did, I set it up that way because it was going to make things a lot easier in terms of wiring. Believe me, trust me. <laughs> I mean, there's more wiring back here on the back. Maybe I'll show you that. But uh, it simplified that quite a deal. Because all, all I had to do was bring in the number one and number eight leads. As opposed to bringing the uh, common and two of the um, switch leads down. So three more wires. So, the issue is, if you remember the last video, or last segment, you know, I got fancy and these I wired up on the bench. With the little template and stuff, hmm, yeah, that's cute. Well, here's the problem. If you have the lights wired to the wrong side of the switch, they won't line up on the front. And what I mean by that is, you know, the, the switch toggle might indicate normal, the lights reverse. Now, the fix for that is really very simple. You take the toggle, you turn it around, the switch handle moves, and now the light and the switch handle are the same. Now, if they're off from the actual turnout position, not a problem. You just go wherever you have access to the 1 and the 8, flop them, and, you're, and life's good. Well, because the fact that I had pre-wired these, and you can't see it, I couldn't spin the... Well, I could on down here. On some of these, I just spin them. Five-minute fix, and you're done. Some of the ones up here, like on this ladder track here, 
and these over here with the uh, industry, they were all hardwired and I didn't have enough slack on the connections between the toggles to enable me to spin the toggle. Oh crap, so what does that mean? Well, two things. You can either cut all the jumpers and resolder them, or if you could um, push the LEDs out, you could just flop the LEDs. Well, I couldn't do that because they mount from the outside. Ah, oh, damn it, now what? Well, what I had to do, and this is only because I'm weird, guys. I mean, this is, if you don't care, let me let me just close this for a moment here. and Let me, let me pause it and go back to the outside because I'm sure this is making people sick. Look at this spaghetti wire here. Okay, that looks a little bit nicer. Now, like I said, I like to have it so the toggle indicates the route you're on based on the diagram on this control panel. So the toggle is down, so I'm normal. Toggle is up, now I know I'm reverse. Now the way I had it wired on a lot of these, over half of them, and especially this ladder, I'm sorry, no, that was the north ladder. It was, anyway, it's reverse when you open it up. The light and the toggle switch were off. Like I say, simple fix, spin the toggle. Now, if the if the toggle and the LED show normal and the turn off reverse, no issue, go to the back, flip one and eight, everything lines up. Easy. I didn't do that. So I what I did was, and I couldn't punch the LEDs through because they mount from the outside in. So I could have just punched them out, swapped the LEDs, and life would have been good. I couldn't do that. So I cut and I resoldered all the LED lights. Basically flopped the LED lights on the inside. That's only if you care if this switch actually indicates the way the turnout really is. If you don't care and you just go by the lights, then again, if they're off, flop the wires, you're good. But again, I'm weird and I admit that. I totally admit that. This is a, a thing most people are going to shake their heads and say, this guy's a whack job. But I want the toggle switch to line up with the route you're set to and the light. So I have both. Do you need both? Probably not. You know, you could, if you can see the turnout, you don't even need the lights. I just do it because I'm weird. I don't know. So it took me about an hour and a half to go back in. I had to do these four, two of these, two of these, two of these. So, you know, a handful, well, it was more than a handful. Over half of them I had to redo. Anyway, that's just because I'm weird. If you don't care about, and I say don't care like it's a negative thing, if it's not a concern that the toggle handle indicates the actual route and you're just going to go by the light, you're golden, man. Just flip the wires, the light will change, you're, you're fine. If you can get to it and you don't try to be fancy schmancy pants like I was and pre-wire things, you could also spin the toggle switch around 180 and then the handle will line up. Then if the, then if the handle and lights are off, then go back, flop the 1 and 8, and you're good. So it could have been literally a 10-minute fix for all this. Took me about an hour and a half, so just a note. But anyway, now it's done. Everything works. I verified everything. Everything does it the way my weird personality likes it. All the toggle handles line up with the appropriate route, and they match the LED lights. So I know weird, but done. So now I can go back to work. I probably can set my diesel fuel in here now. Um, I still have to wait a little bit to do some work on the physical uh, fuel you know nozzles and whatnot for the actual pad everything up there is pretty much done again I did verify all the turnouts work I did uh, just another note I did ballast the rest of the coal yard because it was out to about here so boom now it's done all the way up there if you see the paper towels they're covering up the Pensy F7 units <laughs> Didn't want to get spray on them or anything. So that's all done up to here right now. So now I got that all done. And amongst all the other shenanigans. So now I gotta figure out what I want to do. I might want to put some do have some fun now. Do a little scenery here. Let me start working on this area up here, although I got a lot to do. Um, so that was it. So there's a lot of a lot of work. Um, took me all day, almost a whole day on Saturday, just to wire everything up in the cabinet. And then realized at about 8.30 at night that I had to do a bunch of troubleshooting. And then, <laughs> I was like, damn it. Anyway, it's done. All right, so that's that. Finished. 
everything works now I can basically run the whole layout um, I have to get the swing gate in but I'm working on that and I gotta do some cleanup because look at this mess poor old Sharon it just got all kinds of <laughs> I mean look at that isn't that that's pathetic so I got a lot of cleanup to do over here uh, all right anyway maybe I'll post this now I have no idea how long this video is this might not be a very exciting one because it's just about doing the controls but uh, well, I got some ballasting done actually most of the ballasting ballasting is actually done well of course not over here in Sharon but I'll get to that all right that's enough enough uh, again I'm not telling you how to do anything at all I'm just kind of showing the mistakes that I made I'm not sure I call it a mistake I should have thought ahead and realized the way I wanted to do the lights the LEDs off the tortoise controls might require me to spin an L to spin the switch or flop the LEDs and I didn't realize that and then like I got I got caught because all the other ones I did I never had this issue I must have got real lucky this time I did not get so lucky so for what it's worth just some tips if you're gonna do it that particular way you know, if you're concerned about the toggle indication that the actual handle LED anyway it's just what I did take it or leave it all right so that's that let's uh, let me pause this and see how long this darn video is and decide if I'm doing another segment or uh, or slap this bad boy up. Alrighty, so I decided to get this area yeah, I moved along a little bit and went ahead and installed the diesel fuel storage area. Got everything secured and touched up with paint a little bit, so sitting in there, I think it looks okay. Still considering add in and a lot of folks have suggested there should be a basically a, re a retaining wall retention wall around it i don't know if they were really super super necessary back in the late 50s probably but i will probably get to it but the issue i'm having if you think about it a lot of the you know block brick stone walls you get are like retaining walls and they're one-sided well, if I'm going to put it here, it needs to be two-sided. So I may need to scratch build something and either get some real thin material, you know, to put on both sides of a 1 16th or, you know, something like that um, material or get a 1 8 inch piece and put paper, you know, block or brick paper on both. Anyway, it's not something I'm going to do right now. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. It's just for now, it's, it's not going to be there. Don't worry, no real fuel is going to spill. I added this little, I was looking at it and I thought, well, I have these old, this old fence. Oh man, it's been laying around since the old layout. <laughs> I'm surprised it survived, it hasn't been destroyed. So what I did was, you know what, I'll kind of say this can be an employee parking area. Not that I'm sure employees really want to park <laughs> next to a cinder hoist and steam locomotives but anyway so that's what I did I put that fence in it held up pretty well it took a little bit of work to get it repainted reweathered added a few signs on the inside of it and then came back on this area here added some lighter you know ballast it's actually a Z scale ballast and it, it's just meant to look a little bit more like gravel just I figured they throw something down there all right, so that that's one done. You can faintly see I did a little bit there for some walkways up to the Crew S building. So that was done. Then again, this entire coal yard is now done, ballasted. All the turnouts work because again the Eugene West panels in. So now all the turnouts on the entire layout work. In here, I had some coal thrown in there. Figured, you know, with all the coal cars there getting banged and jostled at some point in time, probably the bottom doors got, the wine locks got damaged and stuff spilled out. So, so that's all done. And this will eventually lead to the coal dock itself, which I'm starting to work on. So this has all been done. Again, these turnouts here are all hand throw because they're all reachable. I did go ahead and get this little area to the right done I had to fill in along the the front behind the fascia but I went and did that that's all done and got some ballast put in there 
and cinders and other stuff to muck it up a little bit. And this has all been done, so this is a lot of tedious work, but I'm glad it's behind me. It's all done. But here, I decided to come up along into here. Now along here, I had a little gap, so I put in some of the MBR mat, just cut into a strip. Since, you know, this is kind of the, not really a, well, what do you want to call it? It's, I think it's going to be a wreck track or something like that. This is the lead, mostly the lead for the coal yard for switching. So then I came up here, and that's all. I'll talk about that in just a second. So what I also decided to do, one of the things I always wanted to use was this station. Now this station, it's not a Pensy station, but I had built it as a kit. I think it's from Depots by John. It's painted kind of in some redding colors. It's, you know, the, the Eugene station. I don't know how legible that is there on the end, but it's Eugene. And, you know, this to me is special because, A, I built it, put a lot of time into it. It's got an interior detail. It's got lights. It's got a little guy there in the bay drinking a cup of coffee. And when the lights are on, you can see it. I like that. And also, this I built right after my father passed away. And, you know, the whole yard is named Eugene after him. And to me, it, this is a special building I wanted on the layout. So I said, all right, fine. Let me see if I can finagle a little bit of room from the lead so you can see where the tracks cut where they are New York Central good lord what's that doing on a Pensy themed layout anyway um, <laughs> so that's where it sits and then what's sitting there is rough no, it's a 13 car cut so that's the amount of cars I can pull to pull them off the inbound track yeah, you know and clear the points up here where I would need to clear to go back into the class yard and that's 13 cars, two of them are 50 foot. So, yeah, you got 12, 13, maybe 14, 15 if you had a bunch of smaller, you know, shorter cars. Anyway, so I think that's okay because that's almost, on a lot of layouts, that's a whole train. And it's going to be darn close to the whole train on my layout. So that's plenty of, of switching lead, I think. So that's why I went, bent, that's why I bit the bullet, modified this, had to fill this in. With some, uh, I think I used, what's the stuff that uh, Woodland Scenics has for their roads? You know, the, uh, well, what's it called? It's for the roads. I, I, I mixed up a bash, poured it in there, smoothed it, sanded it to fill in the gully that was there. Had to do that over here as well. So it's going to be a little road coming across here. The main road is going to be out here in the aisle. It's just a little side road. It's going to come in, go across the tracks. Have a couple, you know, parking spots here for the station. We go around back because there's a, a baggage door in the back or a freight door where a, a little truck could pull up. The road will then also branch on out the road, but you know, access will then be granted up to the DJ Tower, Dock Junction Tower, for the railroad employees to get to the tower, and then probably come through here. May have a chain link fence with a gate, you know, back into the parking lot for the industry back here, which is American Sterilizer. So, I decided I want to do it. So, is it perfect? No, probably not. It's a small little area. I'm kind of pushing things. But again, you know, Eugene didn't have a big station, just a little thing. And, you know, because of the memory of my father, I'd like to have this on the layout. So, that's where it's going to sit. So, that's that. Now, on this side, I'm going to probably use some old, either some sheds or, I don't know, maybe a foundation of a torn out freight building on this side or something like that you know what I mean late 50s are those things starting to disappear yeah so maybe I just pop this here this is an old oh man old kit that I made years ago um, I actually have the ramp it's all beat up like we could put it in there like it's you know dilapidated falling apart again because this track here is mostly the lead for the coal yard this track is either for laying over power a wreck train um, a rip track, you know, something like that. Maybe not a rip track, that's way at the end of the yard. But anyway, so that is that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because travel's coming up. So I'm going to, I know this wasn't probably a very exciting update. I've just been kind of poking away at some smaller stuff. I didn't want to start anything major because I'm leaving very soon for several weeks. So it could be three weeks to a month before I can post something else. 
maybe not that bad, but it's uh, then again, it may be that bad. So that's that. So that's the work that got done. So Eugene Yard's coming along fairly well. South Yard's now all done in ballast. All the switches turnouts work as intended. I decided to go ahead and make this little change up here by adding my tribute to my father, the Eugene Station. That's gonna look I, that's, I, to me. That's gonna look nice. That 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 does that means something to me. So I'm glad I did it, and I'll make the scene look fine. And then. Again, that's where Dog Dungeon Tower will be and some of the sheds. And I verified I do have enough room for a switching lead. I'm not sure why that Pensy set of F units is sitting back there. The crew came in, wandered off into the woods, and has not come back yet. So <laughs> that's called put them out of the way when you're doing ballast so they don't get wet. So that's that. All right. So, again, it's going to be a little while until I'm back, but I want to at least get this up so you can see we have made some progress. And then when I get back and get 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 back into it again, you know, probably probably a month or so until I get to anything really constructed to, to be able to put an update up that isn't just pure pointless rambling. But uh, everyone be safe. So I'll be jetting around for a little bit here, but uh, we'll be around. We'll still be uh, planning, buying materials, stocking up for the rework for the work to start once I get back. So again, do appreciate everyone watching. Do appreciate all the great comments. Just everyone, please stay safe out there, and we'll be back in touch as soon as I get back from all this travel.